that is impressive. With the season you've had, would you have believed you'd get to the final here at Sheffield? Um, that's a difficult question because I didn't, I didn't think about it, to be honest with you. I thought I'm hitting the ball well. Um, it's difficult to see past Judd Trump in the second round. Um, but, you know, I thought, well, hang on a minute, he's got all the pressure on him. I'm out of 16. You know, I haven't won a match all year. I'll just put the preparation in, which I've done, got myself fairly healthy, and, and see what happens. And all of a sudden, as we saw, you know, I put the pressure on Judd and um, managed to come through that match. And, you know, I thought everything's a bonus. But then it wasn't really, because then I had Jamie Jones. And I thought, oh, if I lose this, I'll be absolutely devastated, because obviously I'm not favourite. Then in the semis, I'm thinking, this is just never-ending, and I suppose it'll be like that tomorrow and, and Monday. No, it's final. Mm. Do you think you're better equipped for this one, and if so, why? I think the last final I was in, I was absolutely um, shattered, to, be, to put it uh, politely. Um, you know, I'd made a 147, I'd gone from nowhere to getting into the final, um, you know, didn't know how to handle I was mentally absolutely gone. But... I've had a lot of close matches, a lot of tough matches, but I don't feel like I've got anything out of my tank at all. So you think being fresh has been a big advantage to you? Massively. I mean, I haven't played in a lot of tournaments this year. I haven't played in a lot of the PTCs. I, I never played in um, the, the ranking event uh, in China um, because, you know, I was unwell and, you know, it was um, a time for me to take a break, you know. And I think that's, uh, that's paid off. I mean, you know, Ronnie's done the same. And uh, I don't know, it might be coincidence that we're both in the final. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, you're talking about Ronnie as your opponent in that final. You haven't got a great record against him, so how do you approach that match? Well, I've got a good record against him in practice. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that matters, doesn't it? Uh, but, uh, listen, I'm, you know, more of the same for me, and um, we'll see what happens. Now, what would it mean to you to be crowned world champion after saying early in the season you were contemplating retirement? Uh, it would mean everything. I think everyone thought that I was, um, you know, when I said that, uh, that I was just, you know, I'd had enough for the day and stuck the tweet out or whatever, you know, I'm retiring. But I was seriously, seriously considering. My close friends will tell you um, I wasn't in a good place at the time. I just had enough of all the travelling and all the matches and all the disappointment that I was feeling. So this is a bit, this is sweet to have this um, this crack at the final. I'm going to say I'm going to be gutted if it doesn't go well for me. Um, but, you know, maybe it, it might be meant to be. Do you think there's anything you've got to do better? No, no, I don't. Just got to um, more of the same. You know, I know I've got to, when I get my chances, I've got to take them because I'm not going to beat Ronnie if you don't. Um, but you know, like Ronnie probably thinks all he's got to do is turn up to beat me. Um, so we'll see. Well, he's proving already that that's certainly not the case. Ronnie having to work very hard so far, as indeed is Ali. But I think, can you just sum up for us? your admiration for Ali, particularly this season, and against the background, which, to be fair to Ali, he's never ever used it as an excuse, and in fact, it's only in the last few months that he's made public, properly, all of the health problems that he's been going through. Yeah, it's a fabulous performance, of course. The way the circuit's gone now is great for the majority of the professionals because there's so much work, but if you have got ill health and you're away from home at the time when it's happening, that's got to magnify it and make it even worse. So, what he's done, he's got himself healthy, he certainly practised, I know speaking to him, he practised like mad before he came here. And I do believe that being fresh is a, is a big thing at this tournament. I think if you've had a hard season, you come here at the end of tournaments after tournaments, you're not really in that advantage, but I think it's worked out well for him. And I think he's on pints of carrot juice at the moment. That's, uh, that's health freak Peter Ebden's influence. He says it's working miracles for him, Steve. Yes, and also <laughs> less makeup you need. He'll go orange by the end of the tournament. <laughs> Something like that. And, and the good thing is if the lights ever go off, he'll be able to see, won't he? <laughs> This is what he says, yeah. Well, whatever he's on, it's, it's working, that's for sure, and it's good to see him competing here in this final, obviously. But um, for those of you who are, well, we have memories that go back a bit, you know, this is the 40th and the 30th anniversary of the late, great Alex Higgins at World Championship titles. The first in 1972, and then in 1982, the scene of his greatest triumph here at the Crucible, when he beat Ray Reardon in the final, and then invited his family, including his baby daughter, Lauren, onto the floor to celebrate. Well, a couple of days ago, Lauren was back here, 30 years on, to the scene of her dad's greatest moment. sit and have a conversation about it. I think he liked it when people used to talk about it himself, but there was no shortage of that. Everybody wanted to talk about it. I 
think it was a moment that he was, you know, immensely proud of. I think it showed a different side to him as well. The 33-year-old Irishman making hay while the sun shines. It was a great achievement, and um, he chose very proud of himself too. Soon everything was as bright as the blue sky. I look so happy and uh, elated at winning. And then when I see your face, it takes me away to that special place. But if I stare too long, I probably break down and cry. Oh, 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 sweet child of mine. I just think it's a beautiful moment that's captured in time. Oh, oh. people find out who my dad is, they immediately say, were you the tiny baby? And when you're young and you're growing up um, and going through your difficult teenage years, you're just really embarrassed. But now it's something to be proud of and I'm so glad that, you know, I shared that moment with him and, and like I say, it always can be remembered. So, lucky. Your new world champion, Alex Higgins. <laughs> you know, I've said before that my dad took a slightly boring game, sorry, <laughs> and um, I think he opened up the audience and, and made it quite popular. had an amazing talent. I do think he was a genius. I know it's a strong word, but I, I genuinely do think that. I think he had something that set him apart from everybody else. Rebel, rebel. He was exciting, um, he liked to please the crowd. Um, you know, some of his shots would be like trick shots and like he's doing an exhibition. Swerve around the green onto the top cushion. Oh no, he's totally oh, yeah. cool. And because the people were important to him, you know, you don't get the title, the people's champion, for, for no reason. When I was younger, he was very, very recognisable. He was, he was really quite famous. We'd go out on a day out and people would be coming up to him constantly for autographs and, and, and different things and you know, we'd always speak to them and talk to them and, and, and it was great and you know, we grew up not knowing any difference so to us, people asking for that, that, that was usual. Well I think my dad was maybe born before his time because um, the game seems to be a lot faster now. And obviously you didn't get the name Hurricane for, you know, hanging around the table. I think sometimes other players tried to slow him down to try and get him out of sync of, of what he was doing as a tactic, but I think he would have suited the, the play today. It makes me laugh as well, like Judge Trump saying about naughty snooker. And I'd just like to say to, to Judge Trump, I don't think you were the first one that invented naughty snooker. I think my dad had something to do with that. It's definitely moved in modern times, you know, with snooker players tweeting and different things like that, um, which, you know, it made me laugh to think of my dad tweeting. I think we'd have to censor him. <laughs> In a way, I don't think I could cope with my dad playing today because I think he'd be shouting at the screen or you'd have to lock the, the dressing room door so I couldn't come out because it's so stressful. To me, it's just it was just he was just dad. It was normal. Um, it's all I've ever known. Um, you know, to me, that's that's all, all he was just dad to me. So it's hard to explain because obviously there was times when it was difficult, but. Yeah, it's it's just 
to me it was just dad.